the buccal cavity opens into next the buccal cavity opens into next cavity called as pharynx pharynx is divided into three parts nasopharynx oropharynx and laryngopharynx now if you observe this area this total area is pharynx now i told you this is the buccal cavity this is the nasal cavities both are separated by the heart palate the heart palate continues backwards so it continues backwards so this is called as soft palate the heart palate continues backwards as soft palate soft palate does not contains bones in case of heart palate there is maxilla and palatines but here there is no bones it's only simply made up of muscles and it hangs downwards the hanging portion is called as uvula it is called uvula it is also called velum palatine it is called uvula or velum palatine now part of the pharynx part of the pharynx above uvula above the soft palate this area is called nasopharynx this area is the nasopharynx so maybe up to that area it is nasopharynx and the part of the pharynx the part of the pharynx beneath the soft palate so this area is oropharynx now th that area is the pharynx and you can see soft palate here part of the pharynx beneath the soft palate is oropharynx part of the pharynx above soft palate is called nasopharynx now you can see this these are external nostrils this is part of respiratory system external nostrils internal nostrils this is the nasal cavity so internal nostrils are opening into nasopharynx into nasopharynx eustachian canals are also opening from the middle ear eustachian canals are opening here now you will find tonsils here you will find tonsils the tonsils the tonsils are called as pharyngeal tonsils they called pharyngeal tonsils you, you call it as pharyngeal tonsils nasopharyngeal tonsils or adenoids all same so they are present in nasopharynx there are also tonsils here on the either side of the throat you can see tonsils they are called palatine tonsils just beneath soft palate you will find tonsils you will see tonsils on the either side of the throat they are called as palatine tonsils of course we also discussed about the lingual tonsils tonsils present at the base of the tongue they are called as lingual tonsils all tonsils their function is immune surveillance it is aggregation of lymph tissue function is providing immunity in that particular area <clears throat> now the nasopharynx and oropharynx combinedly open into laryngopharynx that area is the laryngopharynx the nasopharynx and oropharynx combinedly open into a common chamber and that is called as laryngopharynx now at the anterior end you can find a slit the slit opens into trachea this slit is called glottis just behind glottis you can see an opening that's the opening of is fixed 
So here you can see the foot which is coming from the buccal cavity enters into oropharynx and from oropharynx it enters into larynx. In larynx we are having two openings. One is opening called glottis. This is part of respiratory system. This is not part of digestive system. This is part of respiratory system. So that, that is the foot entering from oropharynx, larynx will enter into esophagus. So whenever food comes here, to cover this area, you can see a flap-like structure. Whenever food is entering this area, to prevent the food from entering into glottis, there is something called epiglottis there. So that is, that is called epiglottis. So that's the epiglottis. So epiglottis covers the glottis whenever we are taking in food. So food from buccal cavity, oropharynx, laryngopharynx, enters into esophagus. Now in, in, in children, see, uh, inflammation of tonsils is called tonsillitis. It is called inflammation of tonsils. Now, when there is inflammation, too much of inflammation, and inflammation is uh, unstoppable, then these are removed. It is called tonsillectomy. Tonsillectomy means removal of tonsils. And in children, which blocks that air passages are actually adenoids. So, removal of adenoids is called adenoidectomy. So, food finally, after thorough mixing, when I chew it with it, uh, the tooth, so it's broken into pieces, saliva glands pour saliva into the mouth, and with the help of the tongue, a food bolus is formed, and the food bolus is finally, so we swallow it. When we swallow it, it passes through this opening and enters into esophagus. So this is the esophagus. Esophagus is a tube-like structure. It passes through neck, it passes through thorax, and it pierces the diaphragm, it pierces the diaphragm, and it enters into the stomach. It enters into the stomach in the abdominal region. Always esophagus is a tubular connection between the pharynx and stomach. So generally digestion does not occur inside esophagus. It is simply a tube-like structure. And it is around 25 centimeters. And food passes through that by peristalsis. The upper region of esophagus is guarded by a sphincter. So there is a sphincter here. It is called upper esophageal sphincter. It is upper esophageal sphincter. Here there is a sphincter. It is called lower esophageal sphincter. The esophagus is also called food pipe or gullet. Got different names for the same thing. The esophagus is also called gullet or food pipe. When we swallow the food, swallowing the food is called deglutition. At the time of deglutition, the upper esophageal sphincter is it's so it undergoes relaxation. Now, what is a sphincter? A sphincter is a, a sphincter. It's it it contains muscles which remains in sustained contraction. Normally, our skeletal muscles, whether it is skeletal or smooth, sphincter means it's a group of muscles which remain in sustained contraction, sustained continuous contraction. Normally, our muscles are in relaxed state. But some muscles are in contracted state. Now and then they relax. So they are called sphincters. You, you can see upper esophageal sphincter to facilitate deglutition. Now whenever it opens, swallowing of food occurs. Swallowing of food occurs. Now when it opens, the food enters into esophagus. The first one third of the esophagus contains only striped muscles. The last one third contains only smooth muscles. The middle one third of esophagus, you can see a transition from striped muscles to smooth muscles. 
That means when you are coming from anterior to posterior side, the initial part gradually contains, still contains striped muscles, but gradually they, they wean and over a period of time you can see starting of smooth muscles and gradually in the lower part you will only find smooth muscles, there are no skeletal muscles. And inside the esophagus digestive glands are absent. Maybe some glands which produce only mucus. And if you observe the cross section of esophagus, if you, if you take cross section and observe the esophagus, you can see folds. Internally, there are several folds. The folds are called rugae, esophageal rugae. Now remember, air can also come from this direction, food can come in this direction. So, it is not allowing air to pass through that. Whenever food is coming, these rugae gradually they give way to the food passing through them. So, esophagus is not allowing the air to pass through. So, internally there is rugae. The length of esophagus is around 25 centimeters and the food passes through esophagus roughly in around 10 seconds time by wave-like contractions called peristalsis. The food moves through that and enters into stomach. Remember in between the lower esophageal sphincter and stomach there is another sphincter. The sphincter is called lower esophageal sphincter. It is also called as gastroesophageal sphincter. It is also called as cardiac sphincter. All same. See, this sphincter is present in the lower side of esophagus. This is made up of smooth muscles. These are made up, this is made up of skeletal muscles. Though it is skeletal muscles, it is not completely conscious. It is not under complete conscious control, the upper one. The lower one is made up of smooth muscles. The lower esophageal sphincter. It is present very close to the cardiac stomach, that's why it's called cardiac sphincter. Yes. Of course, it's called cardiac stomach because it's present very close to the heart. Hmm. It is also called gastroesophageal sphincter, gastric stomach, esophageal. Gastroesophageal sphincter, all same. Now whenever, see, when, when food is coming in this direction, this lower esophageal sphincter is open. After food has come into stomach, this is closed. Remember, food is coming through esophagus quickly. In 10-15 uh, minutes time, this is opening, food has come into stomach. Inside the stomach, the food is there for 3-4 to four hours. The food is not allowed to go back. Not allowed to go back because lower esophageal sphincter is closed. That means lower esophageal sphincter prevents regurgitation. Reversal of flow is called regurgitation. That is prevented by lower esophageal sphincter. 